Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And if this is your first time to tune in here to the show, I want to give you a special welcome. We talk about all things real estate investing here, single family houses, commercial. We talk about how to find deals before other real estate investors know about them, how to fund your deals without relying on hard money lenders or banks or mortgage companies. We talk about how to sell properties at lightning fast speed. I'm talking three days or less. We also talk about how to automate our business. So we're running our business instead of our businesses running us. Well, one thing that has really made this show a movement is I have just fantastic guests and experts that come here onto the show. And today is no different. But before I introduce you to my very, very special guest, I want to give everybody a free gift. I've got a special on-demand masterclass waiting for you to attend, and it's called Where to Get the Money Now. In this masterclass, I reveal and pull the curtain back the five easy steps that it takes to go from having no funding for your deals to having millions of dollars of funding for your deals. Again, we're not talking about mortgage companies or banks or hard money lenders. I'm talking about private money. So I want to give out the website right now that you can go check out after the show. The special URL that will give you free access to this masterclass is www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Again, that's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast, all one word. And again, if you are tuning into us on iTunes, uh, be sure to subscribe and rate and review. And if you're watching us on one of our YouTube channels, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on this content and fantastic experts that we have here on the show. And put your questions in below the video. We get all of your questions answered as relates to real estate investing. So with that, I'm just so excited to have a very, very dear friend and just phenomenal heart serving human being here on the show with me today. My good friend, Tom Kroll, just a little bit about him. He is the founder of Wholesaling Inc., which is a education company that educates thousands and thousands and thousands of students across the nation on how to wholesale deals, doing the business with like zero risk. He's also the founder of PSL Home Buyers, which is his own personal real estate investing company. Well, I'll tell you folks, Tom is considered to be one of the most successful real estate wholesalers in the entire country. In fact, through his unique approach, and I'll tell you, he's got a very unique approach to real estate investing. Tom has bought and sold numerous, I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties across the country. And he has also taught and still teaches aspiring real estate investors on how to do the same thing the way he does. Well, Tom's no-nonsense approach, step-by-step -step coaching methods, along with his passion to help others succeed, has created a loyal tribe of wholesaling rhinos. And with that, welcome to the show, Tom. Jay, what an awesome introduction. Thank you, my friend. Bam! <laughs> yeah, hey, all I can say is I can only give that kind of introduction when my guest gives me those kind of notes. So thank you. <laughs> no, actually, as, as I mentioned already, Tom, I tell you what a dear friend you are. Love you, your entire family. You know, Carol, Joy, and I, we were so blessed to first get to know you. I guess it's about two years ago in our yeah. high-end Collective Genius Mastermind we met. And wow, you know what, one of the things that drew me to you, Tom, is your heart, your servant's heart. And you know what? I don't know who came up with this idea of opposites attract, because I sure don't believe that. I think, you know, <laughs> you know I want to hang around people that are like me. And man, you know, I just appreciate you so much, Tom. And so if it's all right with you, Tom, let's go ahead and jump right in this interview, okay? I appreciate you saying that. We feel the same way. Thank you very much. And let's do it. I'm here for your audience to give them everything that's going to help them move the needle right now. So let's do it. All right. So first, I want to go ahead and tell my audience what to expect out of this interview. So everybody, if time permits, if time permits, 
Here's what Tom is going to cover. And you already know why he's qualified to cover this information. So first of all, Tom's going to cover exactly what is wholesaling. People have got, you know, different definitions of wholesaling. You know, is it, a, is it an assignment? Is there an assignment fee? You know, in Tom's world at Wholesaling Inc., what is wholesaling? Also, the big question Tom gets is, how do you find the deals? What's working now? You know, maybe what was working two years ago is not working so well. So Tom's going to pull the curtain back and talk to us about how to find the hot deals. You know, he's also going to talk about time permitting. Tom's going to reveal here, how do you structure a deal? Or when I say structure, how do you figure out what is the maximum amount that, you know, you would want to pay or have the end buyer pay? How do you find the buyers? I mean, you know, you get these deals under contract. Right but how in the world are you going to build that buyer's list of real estate investors to take the deal down? And then, and only then Tom, if we still got time, I'm going to want you to pull the curtain back and talk about how you run a multi mega million dollar business and stay in the mountains for three months in the summertime <laughs> with your wife and kids and have this baby run on automatic. Is that okay with you? I love it. That's my favorite topic of all. So I'm all in. Let's do it. Okay, so let's come back to the, to the very beginning here, Tom. In your world, what is wholesaling? And here's how I'd like for you to answer that question. I'd like for you to give my audience, what are the different definitions of wholesaling? What are the, maybe some of the different, different ways that people may have been thinking what they think wholesaling is? Then bring it down to what is it in your world at Wholesaling Inc.? I, I love it. So let's let's deep dive here in, and we're going to avoid all the fluff and BS. Let's get right to the meat and potatoes. Wholesaling is the art of consistently finding discounted properties. That's it. If you can get good, if you're listening to Jay's show right now and you want to know how do I become a millionaire? How do I become wealthy? How do I have time freedom, money freedom? If you can get good at one thing and that is finding discounted properties. That is people who are saying, I need to sell quickly for cash. I need, I, I'm willing to give you a low price in exchange for speed and convenience. That's what wholesaling is. It's a low price in exchange for speed and convenience. You will become wealthy. That I can guarantee. So I think a lot of times people have this misconception of wholesaling that it has something to do with assigning contracts, whatever that means. They make it all about real estate. In reality, Jay, wholesaling is a pawn shop. It doesn't really matter. I, you know, people make this all about real estate. I have no real interest in real estate. If, if televisions or watches tomorrow were more valuable and more desirable than houses, I would just switch my model to watches or televisions or jewelry or whatever. We do houses because houses are very, they're abundant everywhere. They're very valuable. They're very desirable. It makes sense. We can deep dive that more, but I really want to stress that wholesaling is only the art of finding discounted properties. It doesn't matter what your exit strategy is. It doesn't matter what you do with the property. If you assign a contract, you quickly buy it and put it on MLS and sell it. You buy it and put some paint on it and resell it. The only thing that matters is whether you are Robert Kiyosaki or Donald Trump or Jay Connor, every single good deal starts with a discounted property. It doesn't matter what it is, commercial, multifamily, apartment building, land, mobile home park, a single family residence. That is wholesaling. Wow. Well, that's an, inter that's an interesting definition, Tom. And what makes it interesting is because your definition is very valuable. And I'll tell you why your definition is very valuable is because what it does is it, it helps the person that is new in real estate just focus on that one thing. Right. And that's what our, that's what wholesaling Inc is all about. Is that, that's what I, this is how I learned is just get good. You know, when you, we, we're going to talk about marketing and how to find these deals, but what you have to realize as a new wholesaler, as a new real estate investor is that most people don't want to sell their house of the people that do, which is the minority. Most of those people want full price. They don't want anything to do with your low ball offer. But if you can get good at just finding the handful of people every day that just say, yes, you know what? 
this home is, is really a pain. I live out of state. My husband used to take care of it. He's passed away. The tenants aren't paying the rent. They're destroying the property. I don't want to travel down there or up there or sideways or wherever it is that I have to go to to get that property. If you can give me a fast cash offer and take that property off my hands, I will give you a low price. And I think what, what complicates it, Jay, is so many people think you have to be good at sales or negotiating. You don't. It's a numbers game. One thing we always like to say in the tribe is don't be a deal creator, be a deal finder. Keep this simple business simple. You don't have to be, before I had this job, Jay, I would have walked past you, or before I owned this business, I would have walked past you in the street and you would not have recognized me. I had been fired from five jobs and the last one was in lawn care and I spent a long time trying to get good at sales and negotiating. I could tell you, when you get a 990 on your SAT, you're not good. You're not good, <laughs> not good at that stuff. So hey, look, I got a badge of honor, baby. I got you beat. My first SAT was in the 800s. <laughs> I, just blew, I just blew you out of your seat. <laughs> that is the first one. I've never been beat by my 990 before. Well, congratulations to you. I love it. Congratulations. <laughs> so let me ask you this. You know, your, your story there you're sharing, I appreciate you taking your filter off. So, you know, we got a lot of listeners out there that may be thinking, you know what? I'm not the smartest knife in the drawer. Okay. So how can you be fired from five jobs and then start doing something that makes you mega millions? You know, I'll tell you what happened was I was fired and it was my anniversary. I was actually in my office and uh, I was selling lawn care and I was, it was my wedding anniversary regional manager and vice president of sales walks into my office. They close the door. They fire me. I was wearing my lucky Tommy Bahama socks, which actually were lucky. I didn't realize it at the time. And oh, that's thinking, one of those blessing in disguises. Oh, brother, you can say that again. Thank God. Thank God that I got fired. Thank God. But I called my brother, Todd. I said, what am I going to do? Can you help me update my resume? He said, stop being such a blankety blank, 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 blank. He said, I'm a millionaire. I've been trying to tell you to do this for years and do it. And I said, you know, Todd, it's not going to work. You know, you live in San Diego. The homes are worth $800,000. There's a ton of houses. You know, I'm all the way on the East Coast. I live in Florida. It's basically a retirement community. The houses are worth $200,000 and there's less of them. There's no way it's going to work. And he just dragged me kicking and screaming the whole way to do my first deal which was with Dorothy Cannon right off of uh, Oroso Boulevard. And I made $2,000 and I never looked back. Wholesaling is easy. A lot of people complicate it. They make it about real estate. It's not. They make it about sales and negotiating. It's not. I think it's a very simple business that essentially what you want to do with wholesaling is you want to have a business that one, runs without you. Number two, produces a ton of cash. And number three, allows you to have a a pipeline that you can cherry pick deals from to keep as passive income. And that's it. You know, a lot of people overcomplicate it, but I am a very simple guy. I I want a McDonald's. I I don't want to be a five-star chef. So I don't want to work on weekends. And, you know, we'll talk about this later about why, how I'm able to do this without seeing houses or meeting sellers or meeting buyers. But I think that this business is, I think wholesaling, Truly, it is the greatest business in the world. Really, I don't know anything short of winning the lottery, which I don't even think is a good thing because you didn't earn it. And uh, that leads to a disaster. But I don't know any other business where you can make so much cash in such a short amount of time. It's really, I, I love it. I really, really, really love it. I just, I, I just, I, you know, but as soon as I started doing it, I started telling people, I'm like, why aren't you doing this? <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> so you, you mentioned something a moment ago. You said that, you know, in this world of wholesaling, particularly the way that you and your team do it at Wholesaling Inc., you can become wealthy quickly. So here's my question. How long did it take you to get your first deal from the time you actually started focusing on finding deals. So first of all, let me say this because people, so last year I did over a million dollars in assignments, which is phenomenal. And you had said, you know, how, you know, your team, I just want to tell you my whole entire team is one and a half people. I have one acquisition manager who works full time, which is my brother, Dan and Lorena, who was my first hire 
seven years ago and she's still with the company today and she is phenomenal she's phenomenal i actually jay when you came down to our summit lorena had flown from the philippines which let me tell you is not an easy feat to have somebody fly from the philippines i had no idea how blessed we are to be americans but um, we had lorena come down and she's and your she's your virtual assistant in the philippines yes and she works half time uh, part time with dan and then other part time with wholesaling inc so my whole entire team is me which i'm barely involved dan and and a, a part time va so that's the whole team over a million dollars in assignments last year and as far as the first deal with dorothy cadden i could tell you this i'm 40 years old now I was 33 when I started. I, I don't remember exactly how much time, but I will say this. There was a lot of doubt. There was a lot of doubt. I really had to, I guess I would say I'm very glad I was at rock bottom because I needed that grit that comes with being at rock bottom. I had to sell something. I made a huge mistake on my first list. I forgot to put last market sale date. So all the people I was calling or that were calling me were saying, why would I want to sell you my home? I just paid all cash for it. I bought it three months ago. Mm. And so I had, to, I had to sell some stuff in my house to be able to afford my second mailing. But it was relatively quick, but it, it felt like forever. I, I don't want to say a day because I don't know, but it was, I could tell you this, the first one obviously led to the second and then the hundredth and it just kept going because when you you know there's one thing if i say wholesaling is great and you say but when somebody gets that my favorite testimonials are when somebody they walk they're walking out of i always tell my students don't get a wire i said get the check and then send me a video with the check because when they're holding that check for forty six thousand dollars or whatever the assignment amount is and they're in the parking lot it just becomes real and you realize, you know, hey, I can do this. This is really, it, it's, it's simple. It's not easy because most people, like I said, they don't want to sell and they don't want to sell at a cheap price. So it is a numbers game, but it's doable. As we're on this podcast right now, there are rhinos and other wholesaler students or other wholesalers that are doing deals right now while we're on this podcast. It's doable. So let me ask you this. You've got, you know, you've got a ton of students. I mean, you're doing over a million dollars a year in the wholesaling business yourself and your own business with your one and a half people, which is yes. just amazing. So with, you know, you got students all across the nation. What is the average money to be earned per deal in your world? So here's how I can answer that because average assignment fee or average or, or, or a range, a low to high. Yeah. Well, it depends on, it, there's a few things that affect it. Number one, it's geographic. It's, it's seasonal, right? So in some months, uh, for instance, if you're in Minnesota and there's a snowstorm, right, that affects your ability to, to and, and size of deals. There's also things like in Florida, we have snowbirds. The other thing is that it's based on the skill set of the wholesaler. So gradually, usually most deals are small and they get larger. My average deal right now is eighteen thousand four hundred dollars as we speak today. Well, that's uh, higher than the, that's higher than the national average, from what I've heard. Yeah, it's a good high number. Here's the way I would describe it: in certain areas, based on the city that you're in, if you're in, for instance, San Diego, you will do less deals, but they will be bigger. So for instance, San Diego, Dallas, Los Angeles, all of that. If you are in a city like Indianapolis or Cincinnati or Detroit, you'll do more deals, but the profit margin per deal will be far less. Now, this is, Jay, just, just, this is just typical, right? So this is from having students around the country. What we typically find is that your assignment fee or your profit margin per deal, it tends to be based on volume is usually lower profit and higher profit per deal is usually fewer deals. So that's, and what is the range? I've seen wholesale deals over $100,000 in one deal. And I've seen them that are, you know, less than 500. And I will tell anybody who's listening, I would, one great thing to do is set a minimum because you will find, and I can tell you, Jay will almost definitely agree with this, that if you really want headaches, the small deals are the headaches. The big deals where you're making twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a deal, they're smooth like butter. The ones where you're making $1,400 and you're trying to help the seller. And it's, those are the ones that I would, if it's not your first deal, just abandon it because you've you got it. One thing that we teach in the tribe is set a minimum amount of profit per deal. And that really, really helps. 
I couldn't agree more. What's a realistic time period? And so after this question, I want you to get right into the meat and potatoes of what's hot on where yes. to find deals. But before you answer that question, what's a realistic time period on, let's say someone has never done a deal, you know, they've been, they're, you know, factuated, you know, with, with real estate and they wanted to get into it, but they've never really had any training, never done a deal, never talked to a seller, you know, apprehensive, you know, sort of scared about that thought of what would I say, you know, to yes. a seller and how do I talk that off? And, you know, how do I figure out the maximum I'd pay? What is a realistic, realistic time period from when a student would start learning from you how to do this wholesaling business to getting their first deal? I will tell you that we have had many students do their first deal in four to six weeks. However, the secret to doing your first deal is this, and this is a lifelong secret that is true, not just for wholesaling, but in all things. I think in our society today, you know, we're encouraging so many people to go to university or college and spend all, you know, $45,000 a semester and whatnot. I think what we've lost is this apprentice model. And I want to tell you that the secret is instruction over education. The number one impediment to you doing a deal is you. Stop learning and start earning. And the way you do that is get instruction. It doesn't have to be Wholesaling Inc. It could be anybody. This is something I learned early on is you find somebody who is doing what you want to do and you, you just do what they tell you to do. Don't put their instruction through the filter of your own opinion. Don't put their instruction through the filter of your own opinion. Your own opinion is nothing. It doesn't matter. That, that's why there's an apprentice and, and somebody who is, is teaching the apprentice, right? So the, you have to learn how to submit and get out of your own way and just do what you're told to do. And in this society today that it's, you know, when I grew up, it was Mr. Miyagi and Daniel's son. And he would say, why am I washing the car? And why am I washing it this way? And Mr. Miyagi didn't really have a lot of time to explain why, but when it, when it, it came time to act, he was able to get through the result because he just implemented the instruction instead of his opinion about the instruction. You know, sometimes people will join the tribe and they'll just cherry pick like, oh, I want the list and I want the postcard, but I'm not going to follow the whole system. No good. You got to just submit to somebody who knows what they're doing and get out of your own way. Stop learning, follow instruction. All of your results are going to come from implementing instruction, getting a result. That's where your education comes from. A lot of people put education in the wrong place. They put education in the beginning. Oh, before I do a deal, I have to learn. I have to listen to this thing. I have to get this paperwork. I have to get this contract. No, no, no. You got to get out there, get knocked off your horse, and then get back on and follow a system that works. In my opinion, that is the fastest way to cut down the learning curve and get real results uh, right out of the gate. Man, I love what you just said, Tom. Stop. That's a ride or downer right there. Stop learning and start earning, which I guess we could rephrase that and say, earn while you learn, right? Right. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's nothing like small wins and motivation to keep you going through the mud. When you're, when you're in that mud, you know, it's, if it's just books and podcasts and listening and writing and reading and, and not taking any real uncomfortable action. See, the one thing I would say is seek discomfort every single day. When you wake up, if you're a new real estate student, seek discomfort. If Jay is telling you what to do, do what he tells you to do. Don't like, don't question it. Don't, you know, and not that you want to have, but it is kind of like faith. I mean, you have to just kind of cover your eyes. I remember when I was first learning, Jay, my brother, I, I, he would tell me to do stuff. One of the things he told me to do is he said, I want you to build your cash buyer list before you find a deal. And I argued with him. I said, Todd, I said, first of all, I am all out of money. I said, I don't have time to do that. I said, number two is I don't even have a deal. I said, you're telling me to build a cash buyer list. I don't even have a deal yet. He literally hung up on me. And I, <laughs> I didn't get him on the phone for about three days. And he said, if you're going to question what I tell you to do, and I love him, believe me, my brother and I were competitive, right? But I had to submit to him in this instance. But I will tell you that by doing it that way, I learned such a lifelong lesson that is just so valuable. I, I really can't stress it enough is get out of your own way, submit to somebody. 
and go ahead and be vulnerable. Put yourself in, you know, put yourself out there to, to do that. And, you know, if you get burned, you get burned, but it's better to do that and learn. And then, you know, but uh, I hate when it's, when I was first starting, I was trying to do this on my own. It was no good. I just learned, just do what Todd tells me to do and I'll, I'll do well. And that's exactly what I did. It was, uh, it was awesome. Well, you know, that advice that your brother gave you to go build your cash buyers list, I mean, that translates perfectly into my world of flipping houses because, you know, there's some teachers out there in the world of flipping, that, uh, rehabbing and flipping that says, you know, oh, just go get the deal on the contract. The money will come. That is baloney. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm not getting a house under contract unless I know how I'm going to fund that baby. You know, right. I want to sleep at night. That's why I teach my students the money comes first and Absolutely. the money comes first translates 100% to the world of wholesaling because having the cash buyers list ready to go, that's your funding source, right? Bam. I mean, that's what it's all about. And, but the thing is, is sometimes logic and your own personal philosophy will get in the way of that. And you've got to nip it in the butt. I agree with you. By the way, there's a great new show on television. It's called Undercover Billionaire. Have, have you seen this thing? Oh, I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. Jay, it is a game changer. And uh, the whole premise is, hey, you know, this guy, he's a billionaire. He's going to start a million. He's going to build a million dollar business in 90 days, starting with no resources and a hundred bucks. And it's such a great show. But the very first lesson he teaches is, find the cash first, find the buyers first. It's the first lesson. That's from a billionaire. So I, you and I are on the same page, brother. We're on the same page. And you know, you said something just a second ago that I could not agree with more. And you said, seek to be uncomfortable, which relates perfectly with what I teach my students. And that is the most successful people that I have observed become very comfortable with being uncomfortable. Absolutely. So same deal. All right, Tom. We're already starting to run out of time, so we got to dive in. Let's get right Where to it. Where are finding the deals today, man? Where are the deals? Where are the hot deals? What's working today? So I'm going to give you the best lists that are working right now to find motivated sellers. I don't care what your marketing channel is. Here are the lists. Grab a pen and paper because this is good stuff. And, and Jay said it earlier. There you go. He said, if you, you know, he said, I don't do a lot of podcasts and he's right. So here's, here's what you got. I know. Here, here's the deal. I'm cutting the gab and getting on the pad. <laughs> Let's do it. So I'm going to give you right now the list that you can buy or you can go and find for free at your county, your city, your township, your municipality. They're different everywhere. And I'll, I'll, before I tell you the names of these lists, I want to say one thing to you. It's always better to go and get the list yourself directly from the township, city, municipality, or county than it is to use a vendor. So that's rule number one always. And rule number two is the harder the list is to get, almost always almost always it's more valuable, meaning it's going to make you more money. So if it's really hard to get the list, try, try it and try again, go to the county, wherever early, bring coffee, bring donuts, bring that beautiful smile that you guys all have that your mom and dad gave you, go and use your personality and learn everyone's name. They're going to pass you around. They're going to tell you these lists don't exist. Use that personality to find these lists. Here's list number one. List number one right now is the water turn off list. So these are people who have just recently by the city department, typically it's in the city. Sometimes it's in other places, especially if you're in the Northeast, this changes all over the place. Get people who have had their water turned off. That is usually a very good sign of, of motivation. That's number one. Uh, number two that's been making it to the top of the list recently is the eviction list. Uh, the eviction list is filed from the landlord at the county or the city level. If you can get somebody to go to there every single day and pull that list, that, that one's usually easier to get. But what makes it so valuable is you have to pull it very frequently. So get somebody there all the time and pay them a certain amount of money to pull it. So the eviction list is key. So on the eviction list, let me make sure in our audience understands what we're going after there. Sing, we're not looking for obviously evictions from people in apartments. We're looking for right. people that have, that have been renting a single family house Correct. and been evicted by the landlord or the property management company for the sake of the landlord. Is that correct? Exactly correct. Why, why is that list valuable? I think I know the answer, but you answer it. Because you're one of our best lists. And this is, this is really going to teach your audience something that is more valuable than anything else. I think on this line, our best deals 
come from landlords who thought that rental property provided passive income. That's yes. why. And rental property landlords that have been beat up and run over by a tractor. And that that's exactly it. Because anything that you in your a lot of you know new real estate investors will say, well, I just want to make a lot of money, buy rentals, and then you know live on the beach. Uh, not going to happen. That's not real life. Rentals need to be managed, and anything you watch will do better. Anything you ignore will deteriorate. So you need to. A, a lot of landlords they were under that that umbrella of oh, if I buy a rental, I'm set for life, and I'll ignore it and I'll move out of state. That's not at all what happens. You need to stay on top of it with property management and everything else. So the landlords who are most frustrated, who are going through an eviction process, those are people, especially when they go in and the home is destroyed or the neighbor tells them the home is destroyed, they are ready to sell that problem property. And remember, wholesaling is just solving problems. It's speed and convenience, which is what we provide as wholesalers in exchange for a low price. That's all. Man, I, I tell you, Tom, I know you're on a roll. You're on a crow roll. <laughs> <laughs> you and the team can use that. But I'm, you know, this is just brilliant. I mean, you stop and think about it. This landlord that you're contacting has just gone through the pain and the agony and the stress of getting this person evicted. They wouldn't move out. I mean, you know, I've only had to evict one person in 16 years and I, and that's because I buy most of mine out instead of evicting them. But right. I remember going through that one process and I was going, I mean, what better time to approach somebody to offer, Hey, you can be done now if you want to. But anyway, number and, one, and, and imagine if you were out of state, that's even, Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, even, that's, even, that's even a higher motivation, the eviction list and the owner of the property lives out of state. That's it. I love it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So there is list number two. So we've got the water turn off. We have got the eviction list. List number three is going to surprise a lot of people, but it is a doozy. This is a very, very profitable list that requires a little bit of hard work and a little bit of risk. I got my seatbelt on. Oh, you better on this one. So this list we call the 24 hour arrest record list. What? Yes. So this 24 list, hour, 24 arrest. hour arrest. All right. You got to <laughs> talk about this list. What in the world is going on? So this list is literally hot. It's smoking hot. <laughs> so we have a student in Tennessee who we recommended this list to once and, and he had reported that he's doing over a million dollars a year just doing this list alone. He doesn't what? do any list. You are yeah. kidding. This list is phenomenal. So these are people who have recently been arrested. Now, this is almost always public information. It comes out daily, weekly. It comes out from the city, the county, the police officer's department or the sheriff's department. You get the list, you find out who it is, you find the, the property address and you, when, when you look up this property address, often these are renters. So you send the letter right to the homeowner. So it's a 24 hour arrest record list. It is smoking hot. It is okay, real. so these people that are being arrested are not the owners of the property usually. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Uh, more often we find that they're not, although it's, I've heard reports back that in some areas it is, some students have found that the, the owners are more frequently the ones who get arrested, but typically we find that it's more the renters, but it is, it is a fantastic, fantastic list and nobody is really mailing it. So it gets a great ROI. Wow. So yeah. I know we don't have time to drill down on this show about what you do with that list, but I got to take 30 seconds on it. So you got the list, you get the, the 24 hour. So maybe they own the house. Maybe they're a land, maybe there's a landlord of where this person lives. So give us 30 seconds of what do you do with the list? I mean, do you call them? Do you knock on their door? Do you, no, you don't knock on their door if they're a landlord. Do you mail them? How do you communicate with this list? So there's a lot of marketing channels out there and I would encourage your listeners to just make sure whatever marketing channel you pick, pick one, whatever one you think is the best one is the best one. Laser focus, dominate one channel. I like direct mail. Not everybody agrees with me. I understand, but I love direct mail because like, like Brent Daniels, <laughs> there you go. So Brent Daniels, one of our coaches, my, one of my favorite people in the world, he's TTP cold calling, talk to people, right? So he's a coach over here at wholesaling Inc. He loves talking to people and he's a rock star. I was just on the phone with him actually a moment ago. So Hey, you say hey to Brent for me because you'll talk to him before I do. I will do that. He's a sweetheart and he knows what he's doing. And he, but here's the thing. He feels as strongly about 
cold calling as I do about direct mail. So the takeaway here, guys, is whatever you think is the best channel is the best channel. If you like billboards, dominate them. If you like skip tracing and cold calling, dominate it. Do one thing. The number one commonality you see in people who are struggling as real estate investors is they do a little bit of a lot of things. And even when you can get that to work, you work and work and work and work and you never create a business that runs without you. So I would really encourage you. I like direct mail because you can reverse engineer it. So, you know, if I want to buy a cabin on the Appalachian trail and I want to go there in the summers, all I have to know is how many postcards do I need to send out to be able to buy that cabin? And that's it. So I, I like direct mail. Wow, Tom. Well, guess what, Tom? I got to have you back on my show to talk about how to figure out the maximum to pay. I got to have you back on my show to talk about how you can spend three months in the mountains and run your mega million dollar business and be out playing with your Julie and your five kids every day while it's running. So man, we're out of time. I got one last question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you from the side. Let's I'm do it. From the side. You ready? I'm ready. Best advice for a person that has yet to do their first deal yet. Best advice for someone who is just starting out is this. You are made in the image of God. You are powerful and strong and you laser focused all of your time, energy, money, resources, all of it laser pointed on, on one target will absolutely explode it. So you have to know your own worth. And I'm going to use an elementary, amateur, silly example, but I want to show you. You know who knows motivation the best? Who? Kidnappers know how to motivate you. Because let me tell you, if I took one of your children, I, I really want you, if you're listening to the show and you're struggling, you don't know the difference between the 1% and the 99%, it's this. If I took one of your kids, God forbid, and I was driving in a van and they were in the back and I called you up and I said, Hey, the, the ransom is you got to find one person who wants to sell their home at a discounted price. One person, listen to how easy this is. Everybody over complicates it. If I told you the ransom to get your kid back was you have to talk to enough people who want to sell and one of them's got to offer you, offer you the home at a discounted price for speed and convenience. And that's, you would have a deal for me in 24 hours. So get out of your own way and understand how strong and powerful you actually are. Don't let all this little garbage stuff stand in your way. Treat it as if it's a ransom to pay off because if it were true, you would wake up at four o'clock in the morning, you'd go to bed at 11, you'd skip breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You'd sell your couch and television for marketing dollars. There are no excuses. And I don't mean this as a motivational speech. This is real life. This is the common thread. If you took my top 100 students, the common thread is they wanted it more than everybody else. That's the common thread. You have to want it and you have to know who you are and how powerful you are. And don't listen to any teacher or parent or grandparent or anybody who told you you were less than. You are strong, beautiful, and powerful, and you can do this. It's worth it. I would go for it. Tom, I got a ton of listeners and viewers here that want to connect with you and Wholesaling Inc. and want to learn more about what you've got to offer. I mean, you know, as I said, like attracts like. The majority of my audience are like me, and which means they are like you. So how can people get in contact with you and Wholesaling Inc. and learn more about this wonderful world of wholesaling? Wholesaling is awesome. And you guys can find out more at a podcast, Wholesaling Inc., wholesalinginc.com, or, or if you are just want to cut through all the fat and you want to start doing your first deal, go to wholesalinginc.com, fill out an application. If we like what you have to say, we might even invite you in to be a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Tom Kroll, I love you, brother. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You rocked it, man. You rocked it. I love your, I love your soul. I love your heart. I love your brilliance. And I love how it is that you just love to serve other people. Thank you so much for being on the show, Tom. Jay, thanks so much for having me. It's an honor. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. And with that, folks, I am Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Until the next show, bye for now.